Hello there, Quicksilver Slash here today, and quite clearly, I've got the Admiral Graf Spey, and today's video is a review of her. And she's currently available in game through some grindable missions, or you can pocket up the dough and uh, just pay for her in store. But I'd recommend going the free route and just putting in some games over the weekend and getting this beautiful ship for yourself. Now, rather than compare her to all cruisers, which is a little time consuming, I'm just going to compare her directly to her German competitor, the Tier 6 Nuremberg. And the first thing you're going to notice when you jump in and try to compare these ships is the difference in survivability. 39,400 hit points compared to 27,000 on the Nuremberg. Her armor is 19 to 100 millimeters, vice 30 to 50. She's got 24% torpedo protection, vice the 7% of the Nuremberg. This is a huge step up, and it makes sense as this is one of the so-named pocket battleships, the nickname the uh, British gave to these cruisers, and she lives up to that with that kind of hit points. The next thing you'll notice right away is the artillery. Rather than the 3 x 3 150mm turrets, she's got two triple-barreled 283 mils. She can shoot one kilometer further out to 16 kilometers, vice the 15 of the uh, the stock Nuremberg at least, that does get upgraded and they then have comparable range. But where you really notice the difference is when you hop in and start looking at damage. Uh, she does 3200 HE damage, 8400 AP, uh, compared to uh, 1700 HE and 3900 AP of the Nuremberg. The main difference being the reload time on this definitely hurts you 20 seconds, but they're fairly sprightly turrets with a 25 second uh, turret traverse. The dispersion I personally think is really good, 170 meters out at the 16 kilometers, and shell velocity is decent at 910 meters, and what I like, once again, AP and HE have the same velocities, so if you're switching between shell types, you're not having to uh, compensate with your aim. One of the other unique things that I personally really enjoy about the Admiral Graf Spee is these torpedo tubes at the back. They have tremendous arcs. They go further than the standard 6K you'd get out of other German ships. And I think that's part of what I like, having that eight kilometer range. A lot of people aren't expecting that out of a German cruiser. They're just like, oh, 6K is the number they have in their head. They're 65 knots, they're one knot faster, and they do the same damage as you know, the Nurnbergs, but they're really good and it's the arc. They can fire almost directly astern and about 15 degrees off the bow, as you'll see in match, and that just really is advantageous for so many situations. When you compare it to something like the Japanese, where it's pretty much from your beam back, these things being able to fire all the way up here is just a beauty. Her AA is respectable. I mean, it's, it's nothing to call home about, but it's not the Cleveland. She's got a 33 rating, compares to the uh, 25 of the Nuremberg, and, you know, you've got a couple of the double-barreled guns, you got some of these 20 mil flat guns hidden under the uh, sight, and some of these 37 millimeter flat guns. So, overall, pretty Good AA, well, I don't want to say pretty good. Good enough. You're not really getting in German cruisers expecting spectacular AA performance, and it outperforms, uh, you know, the Nuremberg's. As far as maneuverability is concerned, this is where you kind of get a mixture of things. And it's worth noting I already have modules equipped, so take that into account when I quote these stats. But she's got a 29.9 uh, top speed compared to the 32 of the Nuremberg, and the kind of 30 plus that most cruisers get. She's quick, but she's not quite as quick as other cruisers, which hurts her a bit in her role, which really is that of a cruiser hunter, but still more than fast enough to run away from battleships when need be. Turning circle, as I have it set up, 680 meters, 8.2 second, uh, which means she can turn a little bit tighter than the Nuremberg. As far as concealment goes, 12.7, the Nuremberg's 12.6, you know, nothing to uh, get too excited about, but then again, not too bad considering uh, the size of the ship. Now modules is where she gets a little bit interesting, I mean, my setup is pretty much what you'd expect. I've got main armament 1, 
aiming mod one, damage control one, and rudder shift because I find you really want to have a responsive rudder in this. She can take a lot of damage if you give things your side and being able to get through turns and into turns quicker to me is very critical. But it's the consumables that I really think she pulls ahead. She's got, you know, standard damage control, hydroacoustic, she's got a catapult fighter, and repair party. And those repair parties are so nice, making an already deep 39,000 hit point pool just that much deeper. And that's where, you know, that kind of pocket battleship starts to come out of her. And it just keeps you in the game longer and lets you use these guns. And that's what this ship is really all about. It's these bigger guns, you know. And they're good at range. They're good close in. Granted, close in, you're going to run into trouble with their reload. Their turret traverse, I find, is actually quick enough. It's really the reload that hurts you. But overall, I've really enjoyed driving her so far, and I'm going to hop into a game now that's kind of like the typical game I've had. It's nothing stellar, but it highlights a couple of her key uh, major strengths, and maybe a weakness or two. We'll see. So I've chosen this game for a couple reasons, one of which, it just went decently well. It's not a spectacular game, you know, I don't walk away with six kills. I think I only end up with the one. But the guns behave and kind of act like they typically do. I actually had targets to shoot at. I've had a number of games in the Grash Bay where I just haven't really had much to shoot at, so that's not very interesting. And overall, I think it kind of demonstrates her the best. Now you will notice it is only a tier 7 game, and it's mostly tier 6s. But I don't feel I have to jump into a tier 8 game to be like, here's what a tier 6 cruiser can do in a tier 8 game. Because you're going to have to just play more passively in those situations. And if you end up in a game where you're top tier, well you can be a little more aggressive against those tier 5 cruisers, especially with the better armor. So I'd mention in port, the torpedo arcs and you'll notice they are excellent indeed going to about 15 20 degrees off the bow almost dead astern and those are definitely useful so one thing and i did mention import this ship is definitely the best when used a little more standoff you know put yourself at a range where the armor has a chance to do its job. If you get in close, things are just going to find the weak spots. But by keeping yourself at range, you're more likely to uh, make good use of that thicker armor. And then, secondly, its guns work really well at range. Range. You've got um, 16 kilometer gun arcs, and as you'll see, the trajectory and everything about them is just good. Like nice type grouping had my aim been a little better here probably would have gone better but still 6300 damage there and that's what these shells do 283 is you know this thing's a baby sharn horse it's got two turrets instead of three it's a little bit quicker a little less armored like that's really what this equates to but you'll notice i've put myself kind of at the outer range. I don't want too many targets to be capable of shooting me because, well, yeah, the Graf Spade does have better armor. It doesn't have, you know, battleship armor. It, it isn't a battleship. You can't take that kind of beating. And if you try to drive the ship like that, you're going to get in trouble. Now, I do start turning south here relatively quickly because what I see happening on the map is basically that both teams are going to carousel one another going to do a big counterclockwise drive around the map. Take a shot at Atlanta, land a citadel and one hit, and that's like 11,000 damage right there. And, you know, what she's making for, what she's lacking in shells, she definitely makes up for it with just that kind of raw alpha punch of these guns. Get a Leander lined up, fire, unfortunately Leander is going to turn before the shells get there and they're not going to land.
have an enemy Graf Speyl lined up. Take a shot. And a little far astern. Still good enough for a couple overpens and a couple thousand damage. And unfortunately for me, here is also where I become a target of their New Mexico. And you can see I take a decent chunk of damage, 7,000 from the New Mexico, but I can recover half of it. I'm not going to use my repair party just yet because I do want to make sure that I kind of maximize those repairs. I see a smoke spawn up on my side. I throw the torpedoes off because with 8 kilometer torpedoes, reasonably they're going to get into that smoke. If it were one of the other German cruisers limited to 6 kilometers, probably not making it far enough. And I'd say one place that these shells really actually do start to perform quite well, especially when using AP, is on battleships. You're actually going to get some pretty hefty hits into uh, equal tiered battleships, just because they are larger caliber. But all in all, I feel the Graf Spee is a a really fun ship to drive. It's unique, which I always enjoy. It's, you know, kind of the only ship of her type right now in the game. I mean, arguably, you know, you've got this at the kind of smaller end of the, the battle cruiser, or, you know, as the Brits call them, pocket battleships, and then you've got the Dunkirk, which is really kind of the bigger end of the battle cruiser. It puts the battle in it, this puts the cruiser, like, kind of different ends of the same spectrum of ship. And I finished that Leander off with an overpen and a citadel. So I'm up to about 40,000 damage, three citadels, I finally have a kill. And I find reasonably 40 to 50,000 damage is what people should expect to be able to do out of this ship. Uh, battle to battle. You're obviously going to have ones that can go much higher than that just because the situations present themselves. But unfortunately you're never going to be in a situation where you get to shoot at the entire enemy team one at a time and the Grash Bay doesn't do particularly well when confronted with a ton of targets all at once because it's too many things that can shoot back at you. But if you can keep yourself kind of one-on-one ish against other cruisers, you're going to be able to take them down if you've got a good shot. And as for this battle, I'm just going to continue to work on that New Mexico. Now that I've got the Graf Spee sighted, I'm going to switch over and shoot him, but this really is turning into a cap race already. And it's a little unfortunate. I would have liked a bit better of a fight, but the shots I did get to take, I think, really showed off how strong the Graf Spee is when you pick and choose your targets, when things, particularly when things sail broadside onto you, or within, you know, that 15, 20 degrees of broadside. Like, the shells are going to land, they're going to hit hard. And if you're shooting at the outer range of the gun uh, range, the arcs are going to carry those shells straight down into enemy citadels. So you notice I just did a little thing there. I popped into my uh, torpedoes, not because I wanted to use them. I actually use that torpedo indicator sometimes just to gauge speed. I get a little lucky in my turn there, not taking too much damage. But yeah, some things I'll do when I'm driving a cruiser that has torpedoes is by switching to the get the lead indicator. And kind of based on that lead indicator, you can really get a good assessment of how fast an enemy ship is really going. And with New Mexico, maybe it wasn't as needed, but particularly when things are getting out to those longer ranges where they don't look to be going that fast, it can be useful to do because, you know, your eyes can be misleading a bit. That indicator is going to tell you a good bit of what the ship is doing. And the other thing it tells you is, is the ship accelerating or decelerating? If that thing's moving, you, you kind of know what to do.
But to kind of sum up the Graph Bay games that I've had, and I have tried to put in 15 to 20 just to make sure I've got a reasonable sample size to be able to say, yay or nay, I like this ship. Um, she's been fun to drive. You definitely can't get in close and mix it up like other cruisers. If you try to do that, you're going to get yourself in trouble because the slower rate of fire really does hurt you. You know, I compared this to the Nuremberg. The Nuremberg with those 150s is a bit of a machine gun and you can afford to get in close and really brawl because you're going to have your next volley in, you know, six, seven seconds. When it's 20 seconds, you have to play more passively or make sure you have cover to get behind. You know, this ship does excellent on maps with islands because you can kind of take your shots between the channels and then get back behind another edge of land to protect you and then take another shot and you can use those islands to your advantage. She doesn't do as well on just wide open maps. And it mostly comes down to the 16 kilometers isn't enough range to get you out of battleship gunfire. It's, you know, if you're right on the edge, they're going to be close as well. Some will be close to the edge of their range and you have the time to maneuver, but you're still well within hitting range. And if you don't see the shots coming, you're in trouble. So overall, I'd say that game is pretty typical of my experience with the Graf Spee. 318, 319,000 credits, 54,000 damage, almost 55, three citadels, the one kill, and I thought decent performance. And when you look at the team score, I'm second on the team, 1173 XP. Our war spite definitely did some work though. But the one thing I definitely noticed driving the Graf Spee is it seems to punch citadels more often than not simply because of the higher caliber and man do they hurt like that atlanta was the one citadel 11,172 damage and i hit the leander i even actually put a good amount of hurt on the new mexico just firing a mix of ap and he and that's kind of what you can expect out of her the armor sometimes hold up most of the time doesn't but it is a cruiser it's designed to do a certain thing and it does it pretty well and that's hunt other cruisers and I feel that's kind of its role in this game a lot like some of the other you know cruisers that have bigger guns for their tier than they should they're not great as DD hunters I would not recommend doing that in the Graf Spee simply because you don't have the rate of fire your accuracy is really good and you're gonna hit DDs and I have killed them but you don't have that rate of fire that ships running like 152s have to really just harass them and break modules. But what you are really good at is the long range, just wrecking other cruisers and just putting accurate fire on targets. And that's where she comes in. Her speed is good enough to get you where you need to go. The torpedoes have amazing arcs and often catch people off guard. And overall, she's a fun ship to drive and that's kind of my general opinion and right now with the event on that you can get her for free i definitely recommend putting in the time you just got to play games there's nothing super specific to the uh, requirements it's basically just getting xp and you'll get a free premium ship out of it uh as to buying it well that comes down to you do you really like your german cruisers if so perhaps she's something for you to have and uh, to help train those captains. Um, it's kind of hard to re recommend ships because everyone has a, a different opinion of what worth is. I would probably buy her, but also just because it's the Graf Spee. When it was announced, I was going to be all over it, and I was even more ecstatic to find out that there was just an event to get her for free. So for those of you who uh, haven't got her yet, you still have just under a week left, at least on the NA server, to grind out the missions and finish them off. Anyways, I hope you guys found this informative and enjoyed it. If you did, consider giving a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you later.